New Year and welcome back to the Homestead Challenge. Today, I just wanted to talk about some of my homesteading goals for the new year. Didn't really set resolutions this year so much as a couple specific homesteading goals. These ones aren't really going to be like personal ones, but this is everything to do specifically with my homestead. And as you might know, I don't really have a traditional homestead, like what you think of when you think of the word homestead. So I'm redefining it. I think that if your desire is to be more self-sufficient and make things from scratch, then you can say that you have a homestead. To me, homesteading is a way to actually define all of my goals and all of my goals are kind of working toward an eventual homestead. There are three main reasons why I homestead. I think that when we have goals and they're just kind of floating out there, then there's really no way for them to kind of come into fruition. So the way that I'm going about my goals this year is to really think about why I want to homestead and then create specific goals towards those reasons why. So I can always come back to it and really remember the reason that I'm doing these things. So my first is sustainability and there's health and then financial security. So those three things are really important to me for my family as a whole. And those are the reasons why I homestead. I've created a free printable for you and you can go on my blog on the description box below and check that out and download it completely free. And I'm going to, in this video, go through the printable and show you how I'm planning my goals this year. And hopefully you can join in with me. All right. So as you can see here, my first reason for homesteading is sustainability. So in the past, I don't know, five or even 10 years, I've been moving more and more towards a sustainable life, but I miss the mark in a lot of ways. And I think that all of us, no matter what stage you are in your sustainability journey can do a little bit better. So to me, I want the world to be a place that's going to be great for generations to come to live in. I want to make sure that we are respecting our planet and I want to instill that feeling in my children as well. For health, um, it's weird to me because I've never been one interested in diets. I've never been interested in, I mean, really working out. I like to do cardio, but that's about it. But I've really, as I've been coming more into this homesteading journey, have thought a lot about health and what that can mean, uh, aside from diets and fad workouts and all that kind of thing. So it's been really interesting as I have been making more things from scratch, I started feeling better. It's kind of a miracle. And at first it didn't really click to me, but as I've been eating more whole foods, uh, you know, I feel like my skin sometimes is better. I feel like just overall I feel better. This might be TMI, but I always had like horrible IBS. I just thought that that's how it was. But apparently if you actually eat real food, then your body responds pretty well. So for me in homesteading, that's what health is meaning and starting my son out right from the very beginning eating that way. And then my financial goals. So I want to homestead in order to put my family in a better financial position. I currently do not have an outside the home job right now. Just the YouTube and the podcasting and the blog are what I've been doing with my time. So I'm very fortunate to be in that position and hopefully those things can uh, give me a little bit more financial security in the future. But for now, making things from scratch, not buying prepackaged food, eating a little bit less at restaurants, ordering less takeout, delivery, all of that really, really adds up in the long run, especially for my family who used to eat out at restaurants so much. Doing those things is really going to help, you know, make us feel more financially secure for the future. And, you know, I want my son to have an even better future. All right, so I'm gonna start off by talking specifically about three sustainability goals. I have a lot more than this, but these are my main three things that I want to do this year. So number one, I want to learn to make plastic-free snacks for my baby Jack. He loves to eat the little baby pouches. I'm sure that a lot of people know what those are if you have kids. Um, but every single time, it's a full thing of plastic and a cap, and you throw it away. And he eats like one or two a day. And for me, that's just like, that's pretty terrible. So I want to learn how to make my own baby food pouches. Not only are they going to be more sustainable, but probably healthier as well. And he also eats some prepackaged snacks. So there's like 
morning granola bars that he really likes to eat and just all sorts of different kind of granola-y, chewy baby snacks. So for those, I know that I can make those. That should be super easy to learn a recipe. I can make it once a week, maybe even less than that, maybe twice a month. Have them and keep them just in one container that's not a throwaway container. And that will cut down on all of that wrapping as well and also be healthier for him. Number two for sustainability is using my local farmer's market more. I don't go to mine very often. I live about 20 minutes away from it. And sometimes I'm not really sure that all of the stuff there is actually local. Some of the stuff I'm like, I think that this has been shipped in. So I want to look a little bit deeper into that and also perhaps find a better farmer's market and just make an event. It's a fun thing to take my son and my family to the farmer's market. So I want to start enjoying that more and make it a part of my weekly routine. And for the third goal, I want to find a little bit more responsible recycling. So we know that we should actually reduce first, then reuse, then recycle, but still in typical American fashion, that I have trash and I have recycling. So I wanna find a little bit better ways to recycle. My local recycling company pretty much takes the basic plastic. They actually don't accept glass, which is a little bit frustrating. Uh, most places do accept glass, but there's plastic and aluminum and paper basic recycling. So for those glass items and for the plastic items that don't quite make the cut for my local recycling, I want to find other solutions. I'm going to look into the company TerraCycle. You can actually get different bins at your house for whatever you use the most. So you can have an everything bin where you just throw anything that's not normally recycled in your at-home recycling in the bin and then send it back to them. Or there's more specific ones. If you're somebody who's really into beauty and makeup, they have a small box that you can collect all of your beauty and makeup packaging in and then you just ship it back to them and they'll recycle it all. So there's one of those for pretty much any, you know, there's one for technology if you have tech parts. Um, they have all the different boxes you can think of. I also want to look at, that is a paid option, but I want to look at more free options too, like recycling in the front of my local grocery store, Publix, and also in front of Target. They have options. I want to look into what they recycle, make sure it's really being recycled and all of that. All right, my health goals for 2021. Now these are not typical health goals like, I want to lose weight. We all want to lose a little bit of weight and <laughs> maybe I'll do that. But these are all specific to homesteading. So first I want to find a source for local grass-fed beef. I started looking at sources for local beef, but I haven't found anything grass-fed yet. Um, I did find a website. I can't remember the name of it right now. I will link it below and it's in my blog post as well, um, where you can actually search your most local sources for grass-fed beef. Um, responsibly raised meat of all kind. Then number two, I want to source healthier alcohol. So this might seem a little bit silly, but we consume a decent amount of alcohol in my house. And it just seems so counterintuitive to, you know, be eating all this healthy stuff from scratch and then put like a chemical filled $3 bottle of wine into your system. It doesn't really make sense. So I know that there's a lot of different companies that do like have more responsibly sourced and less chemically filled ingredients in their alcohol. So I want to look more what goes into spirits and beer. I really don't know much about that, but I always hear in the homesteading community about dry farm wines. So those don't have extra sugars and chemicals added to them. I can't get them delivered to my house. In my state, you can't get alcohol delivered to your house. So I want to look at ways that I can get it delivered. I hear that you can go through your local liquor store. So that might be an option, or I might get it sent to my parents' house in Ohio and then pick it up when I go visit them. But looking into that, since it is a part of our diet, it's something that we don't really think about when we think about all of the healthy eating that we are doing. And third, I want to learn to cook new vegetables. So those that have known me in the past know that I never really ate a lot of vegetables before and I never really cooked a thing a day in my life until I joined my married life and I moved in with my husband and that wasn't really 
that long ago. And now I cook all the time. And we cook a ton of different vegetables. As I'm starting my garden this year, I'm going to try to grow a few different kinds of vegetables that we don't often eat, but I like. And I want to learn how to cook them in different ways and incorporate a little bit more into my diet. We also are pretty bad about the leafy greens around here. So I'm hoping to perhaps grow some of those and incorporate more as well. And third, financial goals. Aside from general financial goals, these are ways that I can do it through homesteading. Of course, I want to save money, pay off all debt, etc. My first homesteading financial goal is to make more things from scratch. I've already been doing a great job of that if you've been following along, but I feel like for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, I do really good at making things from scratch, but then snacks and like frozen appetizers and things like that, I feel like my pantry and my freezer still have a long way to go and there's a lot of packaging there. So that's, you know, helps with sustainability if I make those things from scratch, but also it's a lot cheaper to make those things from scratch. Some of those uh, frozen foods can be really expensive. Second, I want to learn how to sew this year and repair items like clothing, shoes, etc. Um, I can sew maybe a button and it wouldn't be pretty. So whether this year I'm going to learn how to just sew simple things by hand or if I'm going to actually invest in a sewing machine, I'm not 100% sure yet, but I'm hoping to be able to do that. On top of that, saving money by not buying new things, I also plan to sew some gifts, which will help out with the holidays and whatnot. Saving money and making homemade gifts is awesome. It's better to receive a homemade gift anyway. I also want to find a cobbler. <laughs> Side tangent story of my cobbler. So there's actually a local one in town, and I've taken several different things to him to repair before. Uh, I've taken shoes and... Purses. A lot of cobblers also do leather purses and whatnot. And my local cobbler is so mean. He's made me cry twice, which I know sounds a little bit dramatic, but he is so mean. So either my goal this year is to find a new cobbler, which sounds, I kind of live in the middle of nowhere, so I'm guessing there's probably not another one. Or I'm just going to make my husband do this task for me. But I think that it's important instead of just always buying new shoes or new purses to maybe get the other ones repaired or get them taken care of, refinished, or whatever before they get bad. And just taking care of them each year. A lot of the purses and things that we and shoes that we have can last for years and years if we actually take care of them. And then for my third goal, I do want to start a healthy emergency fund and pay off the debt. So I'm Looking to think of my finances more in a homesteading and survivalist kind of way, usually I just go about my life as a typical millennial, middle-class American, and, you know, I'm always worried about debt, you know, worried about money, but never really thinking about it in a survivalist homesteading kind of way. And I know that a lot of people get into homesteading to become super self-sufficient. So... Just thinking about debt in a way, if I had no debt at all, knowing that any bit of money that we have is ours and it doesn't need to go to anybody else, being able to being able to be completely secure in our finances would just really allow a peace of mind that I don't think I've ever had before and I'm really looking forward to that. So in order to make our goals come true, we have to plan them out a little bit sometimes. Some of these goals are a little bit more simple, so I might not need to do a full planning with them. I might just simply need to get it done. But for others, they do take a little bit of planning. So I just wanted to show you my goal tracker here that's in the free printable. I just have an example here with my first sustainability goal. So this is me wanting to learn to make plastic-free snacks for Baby Jack. I am going to potentially need to buy some things for this. I probably already have a lot of the ingredients, but I will need to get a few fresh ingredients as well. And then I want to look into fillable and reusable baby pouches. Um, I know there's a lot of different contraptions that you can use, but I want to be realistic about this. And I know that washing them could be difficult, so I want to look into the best solution possible for that. And I potentially need to buy an immersion blender, which if you've seen my <laughs> past video uh, that was undecorating with me and my homestead fails, then you'll know that I don't have an immersion blender and I tried to make mayonnaise with it 
without it. And I think it might be impossible without one. So I think that that purchase could be something that uh, will be useful for many things. So I have my steps here. Um, I need to gather all the recipes. I need to do some research and see what I think that Jack would like. I need to order the supplies. Um, some of this stuff I'm probably gonna have to buy online. Like I said, I kind of live in the middle of nowhere. So some of this stuff will be hard to find locally. Uh, and then I'm gonna try out some recipes and just see what Jack likes and really work it into my weekly routine. So if I'm not going to have this be a routine, then it's kind of worthless. I need to figure out what day a week is best for me to make this? Is it realistic for me to make this every single week? Or is there a way that I could make it once or twice a month and freeze them? Looking into that, the most realistic way to keep this goal going, not just for whenever I start this, but throughout the whole year and beyond. I kind of just want to end this video talking about different things that I hope to learn this year. So. Some of these go along with my main goals and my main reasons why I homestead. But for the most part, this is just kind of a, a brain dump of what I want to learn, what I hope to learn, and what I hope that you want to learn with me. If you don't end up seeing anything here that you want to learn, but you want to know more, you want to do it with the homestead challenge, then leave me a comment below. Let me know what you hope to learn this year, and perhaps you can help me host. Uh, one of the challenges this year. So things I want to learn. I want to learn sewing. I want to learn how to make soap. I don't know why I've been always intimidated by this because of the lye. And I know you can make soap without lye, but I think I can figure it out. Uh, I want to learn how to can. I've never canned before. I've only fermented. I'm going to be gardening new things. And you'll have noticed that none of my goals pertain to gardening. And that's because I actually did a full in-depth blog post on garden planning and I have another free printable with that as well. So you can go in the description box below if your goals this year all have to do with gardening that might be a good printable for you to check out. I want to learn how to make extracts, specifically vanilla extract because I use it in my coffee every single day. I want to learn how to dry out my herbs. I've only ever grown fresh herbs. I've never actually tried to dry them before. I want to perhaps learn how to make my own alcohol. This might be a large goal because I know that alcohol making does require a lot of equipment. So before I go ahead and buy all this stuff, I wanna make sure that it's actually something that will be worth doing. But I think that my husband might enjoy joining me on that venture. I wanna learn how to make sandwich bread. So I have been making a lot of different like rustic artisan loaves but they're not like a traditional loaf of bread. I typically buy our toast sandwich bread separately. Um, I don't know why all the recipes I look at for sandwich bread intimidate me a bit. They look a bit dense and I'm just not sure that we would enjoy them. So I need to find a good recipe for a super fluffy, soft at home sandwich bread. I also want to look into potentially making ceramics or clay crafts. I don't plan on investing anything like this myself, but I am a military family, and if you are as well, then you know there's an arts and crafts center on post that actually offers a lot of classes into things like that. And I think they also have a sewing class, but I'm not sure. Of course, unfortunately, with COVID right now, I think a lot of that is postponed, but here's to hoping 2021 is better and we can enjoy those resources again. And I'd also be interested in learning a little bit about crafting with leather. I don't really know what that looks like. I just know that I love leather and that would be something I'd be interested in not only in crafting with, but learning how to sew, which I know can be difficult. So something I, I want to figure out. So hopefully those gave you some ideas that you can incorporate into your homestead goals for the new year, really no matter what stage you're at. I am obviously a beginner homesteader, but a lot of these ideas can be good for anybody. And I know that Homesteading is such a crazy broad field that no matter what stage you're at in your homestead, there's going to be new things for you to learn this year. So I would love to know in the comments below what you're hoping to learn how to do this year and perhaps some of your goals and always go back to remembering why you're doing this. These goals, some of them seem super small and insignificant. So, you know, I might not bother making new baby food for my son, but if I go back to think about why I'm doing all of these things, then it really is gonna drive me to 
get some of these things done and get some of these things checked off my list that have been on my list for a long time. So here's to hoping that 2021 is a better year. Here's to hoping that you set some amazing goals and you accomplish them. And I really hope that you join me in the Homestead Challenge. This month, I'm going to be going through more specifically some of these goals and reasons why. And I'm actually going to be getting some of these things crossed off my list this month. I'm going to learn how to do new things right away in January. Hopefully then I will be able to carry these habits on throughout the rest of the year. So stay tuned. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, Happy New Year.